Welcome to the May 2021 Ask Your Guides VIP live event. I'm delighted that you all joined me here this morning. I know it's beautiful outside and you have other things to do. So I always appreciate when you come and join us to bring this beautiful collective energy together so that we can share it. And then the rest of the month can just flow seamlessly from there. So I want to take just a moment to do a little grounding and just ask for our angels and guides to join us. So if you'll just take a couple of deep breaths, close your eyes, allow that beautiful life-giving oxygen to flow through your body. And as you slightly look up, you will notice a beautiful, beautiful white column of light coming down until it meets your crown chakra and slowly sinks into your body and as it does it feels like warm milk flowing through your body comforting reassuring loving rejuvenating relaxing and that warm liquid just trickles all the way down through your body past your shoulders, your chest, down, down, through your legs, coming out your fingers and the bottoms of your feet, sinking deeply into Mother Earth, connecting with her. And in this day and age, it's more important than ever that we take the time to connect with our nurturing Mother Earth, give her our love, share energy with her and now you are anchored firmly between divine and mother earth you are safe you are uplifted you are strengthened and you are also loved and now we ask collectively our guides and angels to join with us today as we gather in this beautiful space to connect with each of your guide teams to receive enlightenment and wisdom to guide you on your journey. And together we all say thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we are ready to begin. And the very first person who had a question was Kat. So Kat, what's your question? Good morning, Deborah. Morning. Um, thank, thank you for um, for doing this. First of all, um, so it's been a minute since I've talked to you all, um, and a lot's occurred. Uh, I found out I was pregnant, and um, I I'm I'd like to know if the guides can give me some insight into this pregnancy. I have a previous miscarriage, and um, I am scared. Um, I've been having symptoms and I'm wondering, am I correct in thinking I have uh, the cholestasis early on this in my pregnancy? Um, will I have any problems during this pregnancy? And will my baby be born healthy and full term? Okay, so for Kat, what can you tell us about this pregnancy? Is it viable, first of all? Yes, right now it's viable. Okay. And is it highly likely that this baby will come to full term and be delivered healthy? Get a big yes on that, cat. Is there anything that you want to share with her that she needs to do or be wary of during this time of incubation? I'm feeling your angels just embracing you tightly, Kat. They want to fill you with love and light and soothe your brow, telling you to let the fear go, to lean on them. They are there with you. You know, there might be some baubles along the way, but right now it looks really positive. They will be with you holding your hand. You can lean on them every step of the journey. Hey, um, just... One thank you so much to ask for you and the the ideal optimal time for the baby to be born will that be at full term will it be 
past her due date. Oh. Yeah, because I was feeling like this was going to be a baby that wanted a little more incubation. So yeah, past your due date. So don't get nervous if it goes a little long. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. Anything else? Uh, yeah. So um, as you know, I, I did start my business, Soul Brood, and it's been thriving. Um, I recently quit my job at the hospital. So now I'm going to be giving my full attention to my business. Um, so I'm wondering if my guides, obviously I'm taking it easy because I'm not trying to overwhelm myself during this time. Um, but do they have any um, advice or words of wisdom um, for me at this time regarding soul brood? So any guidance you can give Kat on her new business? I'm seeing the sun shining on you and the business. It's coming up over the horizon as this new beginning and blessing, blessing your efforts, being with you. Anything else you want to show her? Now, I'm just seeing you moving forward with confidence, Kat. Any fears or worries that are coming up, just let them fall away. Keep moving forward in line with your vision. And <laughs> this is funny. You were on a straight path and all of a sudden you did this little ziggy zag like you would see in some of those spider webs. And then you go straight again. So they just want you to know that you want to flow with it. And sometimes the flow goes zigzag as opposed to straight. And that's okay because you need those moments of reconnoitering, adjusting, tweaking. And that's perfectly fine. So don't let that throw you off. Just keep moving forward, even if it is slightly crooked every now and then. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Thank you so much, Deborah. God bless you. Thank you so much. You've brought so much peace uh, to my heart and my mind right now. Thank you so, so much. I'm so glad. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. So next up, we have Mike. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. I'd just like to ask if there's any guidance, if I'm missing anything. In general or about something specific? About the, all the projects I'm working on. Okay. So for Mike, any guidance or specific tips that you can share with him? I'm seeing your guides with these big beaming smiles on their face, Mike. They're just really pleased with the progress that you have made. And they're tapping me on the shoulder to remind me that, yeah, including working on selling a house and moving into a new space. And you've done all of that so beautifully where in the past that might have been uh, more disruptive for you given your proclivities as a sensitive organizer. So <laughs> <laughs> they wanna give you validation and full credit for that. And you should give that to yourself as well. So what else, what about these projects? They're telling you it's okay to slow down a little bit. Don't be in such a rush. I know you have slowed down some, but they're still feeling like a pressure. I'm feeling in my chest that on your behalf that you're feeling more pressure there. You just wanna keep doing your deep belly breathing, relaxing, checking mm -hmm. in with your guides, maybe a couple times a day. Mm -hmm. See where you can make little adjustments, maybe do a little slowing down. There's absolutely no rush. You've got all the time that you need to accomplish your goals. And in the slowing down, you have a broader field of vision so that you'll see more of those little things you might've missed otherwise, and that will serve you well. Anything about the house? Okay, anything you can share with Mike about the house? Is everything in alignment for the sale to go through? Yeah. It's looking like all systems go, but I'm seeing one yellow light. So what is that yellow light? It's feeling like there's just a little bit of attachment still that needs to be cleared, Mike. Do you feel that? No, I didn't, but I'll, I'll work on it. Thank you. Yeah, because I just see one yellow light. Everything else is green. Did Thank you so hard? much. Yeah, you're so welcome. Okay, Rachel. Hi, Deborah. Can you hear me well? Yes, I hear you. I see you. Welcome. Uh, um, I am um, super, super happy to see you today and to have um, this uh, opportunity because I'm literally sitting on boxes and it's just my very last day in my home and I'm about to travel full time and it's so scary. I am so 
getting everything like it's not moving to another place it's literally getting rid of everything and everything that's left has to fit in my car so it's just um so i just i don't know i don't have a specific question i would like to specify business and personal and start with the personal like do my guides have any advice for me will i be able to succeed traveling full-time and go to the places i i love and um yeah okay so for Rachel, what can you tell her about this big shift in her life? Are all systems go for her to move out, take all of her things, hop in that car and head off onto the horizon? That's all looking good, Rachel. And they're saying, don't worry about it. Obviously, it's normal to have those fears when you're making such a big shift. So don't judge yourself. Don't go into that yeah. state of judgment and, and criticism because that will hold you back. Just soar with it. Keep doing your deep breathing. Like Mike, you need to do that deep breathing. You need to relax into it and realize that this is your manifestation. This is your dream coming true. And now mm -hmm. all you need to do is walk forward confidently into that bright future. You'll be creating, tweaking, shifting along the way, because as you do that, you'll see new things. You'll have new insights and your desires will change. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So know mm -hmm. that if the division shifts a little bit, that's perfectly fine. Don't panic if that happens. That's just you responding to your guides, <laughs> nudging you here and there and helping you to find the very best path. So go forward boldly with confidence and joy. Get the joy back in there. More of that fun and appreciation for what you have created. Now is the time to really revel in it. Mm -hmm. I forget the joy. It's true. I'm so stressed right now with these, you know, packing up and stuff. And I completely forget the joy. And it is my dream. It is. It is. All right. Um, and then business wise, anything, anything there? Okay. So anything you can share with Rachel about her business? I'm here in zippity doo da. So it's the same kind of energy, Rachel, you want to put towards your business as you are with your move, it's being in that state of joy, the heart of service, allowing those who are a match for you to come to you. You don't want to get into that place of, you know, tunnel vision where you see it all one way and you don't allow it to be flexible because you're changing, your energy is changing. And that means the way you do business will probably change at least a little bit. So flow with that, be open to that shift. That's the most That's interesting thing I, I think about this message is that you need to realize that your energy is shifting and that will impact your business in a positive way if you allow it to. So just be aware and flow. Don't go into resistance. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. A thousand questions come up right now, but yeah, I'll, I'll just see what, what yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, because I do love serving and I do love helping my clients. And so, and I'm still on YouTube, you know, so I'm still growing there and trusting the process. I still haven't found my soulmate. I mean, we still haven't connected. So I'm still, uh, maybe a last thing is um, I've been thinking about doing a masterclass, like a Facebook challenge type of thing. Is that something that would be um, recommended? Okay, so a Facebook challenge masterclass, would that be an optimal choice for... Rachel right now. Yeah, that looks really good if you want to do that. The mm. other thing I was seeing while you were talking, do you know that character Gumby? The green no. character? It's it's made out of almost like clay because it's very pliable and moldable. And they made them in toys, probably what in the 70s or something. All the kids had them. And Gumby had a horse named Pokey who was orange that hung with him. So what I was seeing as we were talking about your business and being flexible was Gumby. Go Google Gumby. There's some fun okay. there. And maybe you want to make Gumby and Pokey your mascots for your new journey. Just to help right. remember the fun. Okay. Yep. So focus on joy and fun, right? All right. Good. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you. So Linda E, you're next. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um messages from my guides that I need to know. Okay. So is there a message for Linda today? Would you like to share with her? Oh. So I'm hearing this, this old um, hymn. I got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Do you know that song? 
Yes. Okay, that's the song that's coming up for you. So it's more lightening up for you, Linda, feeling that joy. Because when you allow yourself, even if you have to kind of fake it until you start to feel it, you might need to do that to cross over that hump. Put yourself into that feeling, sing, dance around the house, whatever you need to do to get that feeling in your body. When you do that, like Rachel, you're going to be shifting your energy, which will help you move into a more delightful space. Does that make sense? Yes. Because you're needing like heavy doses of joy right now to lift you up. And when you do that, you will also have more clarity of vision because you'll be standing up higher. It's like, it's almost like once you start singing the song and dancing around, you get taller, you stretch up. And when you're stretched up, you can see more, better vision. Having dinner with joy tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Does that help? Uh, Got to get out more. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah. Was there something else you wanted to ask about? Uh, what planet am I from? Uh, a neighbor friend years ago told me that was a medium said that I was from planet Clarion. Is there a planet Clarion? Okay. So Linda is Linda from a planet called Clarion. I get a no on that. Okay. If there is a planet with that name, I've not heard of it. So it's possible she's using a different set of definitions for the planets. I always question everything. <laughs> yeah, it's good to it, question. It, it didn't, it, it didn't you know, sound true, but uh, what system am I from? Pallades or Octorian or, or both? Okay, no, you, it would be one or the other. One, okay. Yeah, I'm not getting an answer on that. And generally I don't answer those questions on these calls, Linda. Okay, that's fine. Because I have to do a little different kind of research to find that out. So it's not conducive to just a little snippet of time. We okay. need to put more energy That's fine. into it. Okay. And one other thing, last time you told me I needed to drink uh, dandelion tea for liver, is, is that cleared up? Okay. So how is Linda's liver doing? Is there an improvement? I do see improvement. Does she need to continue with detoxing her liver? No, you're good. And they're just saying... Think of it like your gas tank and you want to periodically top it off so you don't have to do it all the time but you know maybe once or twice a month would be good okay good thank you you're welcome so next up is ryan hello how are you great how are you good i'm ryan i'm from philadelphia i started to awaken last year to my and then started opening up the spirit and my spirit guide and um they're all from my past life and in the past year, they've been doing a lot of different attunements, my body sort of integrating their energies through me. And sometimes it causes me physical symptoms like fatigue and brain fog. Mm -hmm. And they say I'll oh, do a lot about healing that I'm going to do in the future, but they can't reveal everything to me. And they also help to help, help me with my uh, intuitive abilities, like clairvoyance and clairaudience. So I just want to know, do they have any messages for me in terms of my spiritual development? Thank you. Yeah. So Ryan's team, do you have anything you want to share with him today? He's here waiting to connect with you. Ryan. I see something that looks like a giant blueberry. And it's on the top half of your body. So it's around your torso. So what is the giant blueberry about? Are you talking nutritionally? Is that something nutritionally? Okay. Do you eat blueberries, Ryan? No. Do you like blueberries? Nope. Okay, so why blueberries? That is very peculiar. And now I'm seeing it shriveling up, drying up. So it's it's like, you know, the dried fruit kind of blueberry. Are you saying it's a raisin? What about raisins? Do you like raisins? Sometimes, yes. Okay. So are you saying that nutritionally that raisins would be advisable for him? Is that what this is about? Okay, yeah. For whatever reason, Ryan, raisins, let's see what else they have to say. They're kind of being uh, very, I don't know, quiet. Oh, you know what it is. They're wanting you to connect directly with them. You don't need an intermediary. Okay. That's why they're pulling back. Because it's like, huh. Ryan, 
hello, we've been developing this relationship here. Got What's it. this about, right? Sometimes I, I look for others for advice because sometimes when I get my own guidance, it can be biased sometimes. That's why, you know? Yeah, well, that's your ego telling you that. Mm, so if they tell you something and it's uplifting, inspiring, it's them. If it's something that you're hearing that is chiding you, chastising you, holding you back, that's your ego. Got it. So the journey is just about learning to distinguish those two voices. Right. What you exactly. can do... Do you have any ritual that you use before you connect with your guides? No, they talk to me throughout the day. <laughs> okay, so when you want to have a conversation and be sure that it's them, do a little ritual, a little prayer, and make your intention that you're connecting with your guides. When you do that, ego will take a step back. Then Got you can it. have more confidence in what you're hearing. So that's part of your journey right now. And for everybody who does this, that's a big part is getting over that hump, learning to distinguish the voices and then trust what your guides tell you. Got it. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah that, that, thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for being here. Thank you. So next we have Amy. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Thank you. So Deborah, I have had some challenges um, assimilating some feelings and issues around my family. I think I've been naive about it, you know, for it's, for a very long time. It's been a lifelong situation, but what is it going to take for me to totally accept um, and internalize mind, body, and soul that I no longer have, um, and that so that I will no longer have an attachment to my biological family in this lifetime? Okay. So the first thing to understand, if you don't already know this, is that you chose your mother for a reason. There was karma or there was matching energy. There was a reason, but that was in the beginning. If at some point in time, your paths diverge, just because she gave birth to you and the others are your blood relatives does not mean you are obligated to have anything to do with them. We need to understand that if a family dynamic is harming us, that the best choice for our soul is to cut that tie or at the very least minimize contact. And that's perfectly okay. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's about what's best for your soul. Does that make sense? It does. Um, and I know that no contact is the best, but you know, there was a family situation that came up that reunited us. And I had this like episode of amnesia, you know, you just kind of forget because um, it was a pretty emotional event, but so something, you know, it triggers me. It totally triggers me. And I'm just wondering, am I not hearing my guides or what is it gonna take for me just to accept no longer is this my reality? Well, it's a process. You don't snap yeah. the fingers, right? Uh, do you do any energy work like EFT or Ho'oponopono, any of those kinds of things? Um, Actually, I, I have done a lot of energy work around this for quite a few years, you know, and I'm pretty much okay, but it's just, there's something I just feel deep seated that triggers me that, you know, I still think is deep seated and I want to, and I'm thinking about, you know, maybe doing brain spotting or something like that. Would brain spotting be a good therapy for me? Let's ask. For Amy, would brain spotting be an optimal choice? Yeah, if you're drawn to that, go do that. Absolutely. Okay. The other thing, Amy, is stop picking at the scab. Stop focusing on it because it's going to make you feel bad every time you focus on it. So when it comes to mind, yes, granted, you just had an interaction, so it's fresh. But do the swipe the screen. When that thought comes up, swipe it away, shift to something positive. Just train yourself not to stay in that energy. That's self-torture. You don't want to do okay. that. You can absolutely do this. It is wonderful to get coaching help if, if it's available and you can do that. Absolutely take advantage of that. Help yourself to get through it. But day by day, hour by hour, whatever you need to do, just keep swiping that memory away yep. and go back to the positive. Okay. I right. am, I do catch myself and I do become aware of when I'm going into that loop. Great. 
So thank you for that. One more question. So I am starting to um, a new journey, a brand new journey, like one no ever, like I've never experienced before. So I'm trying to manifest things and I feel kind of like there's a fog or something going on there. So moving forward, what would be the best um, way to go about this? Okay. So for Amy, what can you tell her about moving forward and manifesting? Step into that energy of joy, as we've been talking about. I think this is going to be our theme today. So step into that happy energy and don't be rigid about your manifestations. Allow them to be better. So whenever you ask for something, it should always be this or something better, because very often our guides with their higher vision see that something slightly different than we were going for would better suit our situation. So allow it to expand and be better. That's very wise. And just enjoy the journey. Don't get in a rush about it. Just allow it to flow. You want to check in with yourself a few times a day. Ask yourself the question, am I in the flow or am I in resistance? And if you're in resistance, what can you shift to get back into the flow? Because the more you're in the flow, the faster the manifestations happen, the better you feel. I think I remember reading that in your book. So... Okay. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Next, we have Gina. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, thank you for doing this today. It's a pleasure to get to interact with you and the guides. Thanks. for um, What images do my guides have for me in relation to the future? Okay. So for Gina, what can you share with her about the future? I'm hearing that song, 76 Trombones. Do you know that song? Yes. Okay. So that's all about uplifting and joy and celebration, isn't it? It's getting out into nature. It's that marching band. It's feeling the energy, connecting with a group of people in a collective purpose. Does any of that fit with where you're at right now? I'm starting a new life. And so... Uh there's a lot of uh, spinning plates. And so there's a lot of collaboration that needs to happen. Okay, great. So they're wanting you to step into that confidently with a, a joyful, happy spirit. Try to stay in that energy as much as possible, but don't do it alone. That's, I think, the biggest overriding message of the, about that. Because, you know, when you think about a band, if it were only the trombones, it really wouldn't be very fun to listen to. You need all of the instruments bringing their energy and their beauty to the collective to form that big successful picture that they're all working towards, that experience. So don't be afraid to get into a collaborative effort with others that will help you get there faster and with more joy. Awesome, okay. Um, one other question is, will I be changing jobs in the next year? Is it highly likely that Gina will change jobs within the next year? I get a no on that. So is it highly likely she'll be changing jobs within two years? Again, a no. Are you wanting to stay? Are you torn about staying or not? Uh, our office has been undergoing transitions with uh, the executive director. And so I didn't know how that was going to trickle down. And so that gives me peace of mind that things are going to keep going forward in a positive way. Yeah. I hope. It's like, as long as you want to be there, you can be there. That's the energy I feel. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Catherine. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Uh, it's great to talk to you um, from Ireland. <laughs> um, I'm struggling really badly at the moment. I'm trying to keep it positive. I'm trying to keep my vibes nice and high, uh, but I am struggling. Uh, so I'm just wondering if my guides have any messages for me and if there's any sign of a job offer coming. Yes. So the visual I got when you were talking about that, Catherine, is you in the water. And when you struggle, you sink. When you relax, you float. So when you notice that you're struggling, that's the time when you stop and you do that deep breathing, you pause, you look around. What can I do different? What can I do that will be more relaxing, not stressful, 
flowing, you're always wanting to look for that flow. So when you look at your situation, where could you shift where you be more into flow rather than struggle? That's what you want to look for. Because you're fighting against yourself when you're doing that, if that makes sense. It's like a drowning person and you're, you know, splashing and, and all you're doing is sinking. Yeah, I'm trying so hard to, to stay positive, but it's, it's difficult, you know. Yeah, but as long as you use that language and those thoughts, that's where you're going to stay. So that's what I want to encourage you. Let that go. Okay. In everything that you're doing, can you find one little bright shining spot to be happy about? Even okay. if it's just, I'm so grateful I woke up this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Break it down. When you do that, when you break it into those tiny little steps, it will start expanding. When you find those tiny little things to be in gratitude about, that shifts your energy. It puts you into flow. And then more of the good stuff comes in. Okay. So it's, it's, I know it's, it's hard to hear that and it's hard to do that. But if you break it down into teeny tiny baby steps, you really can do it. And you will find yourself shifting rather quickly. It's just anytime that negative stuff comes up again, swipe the screen, find that something good to focus on. Okay. Maybe it's a meditation and you go to your happy place and you just absorb the warm energy. Okay. Let your guides and angels come and embrace you. They will stand around you in a circle so tight, close that they're all touching you and you're all squished in the middle, filling you with love and light, as well as courage and uplifting you so that you can move through this with more ease and grace. They will bring you that gift if you let them. So when you start feeling that and you don't know what else to do, do a visualization, bring your angels in. And if it feels like you're imagining it, let that go. Don't judge yourself. If you're seeing it and feeling it, it's there. If you're intending it, it's there. Because very often what we see, feel, and hear in meditation is just like a daydream. And we dismiss it because we think, well, I made that all up. No, you didn't. You're allowing your guides to interact with you. And that's the way it usually happens. Does that all make sense? Yeah, no, I've started meditation the last month or so. Probably only 15 minutes is all I can tolerate at the moment, but it's a start. Even two minutes, whatever okay. you can do, it will help you. Okay. And is there any sign of a job offer coming anytime soon? Keep connecting with them in the meanwhile, though. Okay. Regularly. So for Catherine, is there a job offer in the near future? Not the near future. Okay, what about within six months, say? Job offer within six months? What about within three months? Okay, so four, like four months in that range, something should shift. And that Very might much. be you because you're doing all this work and you're making the space. So what you need to know, Catherine, the faster you do it and the more regularly you do this, you can speed that timeline up and it could happen sooner. Okay. Should I take on anything else in the meantime? Should I focus, you know, even temporary? Okay. Would it be wise for Catherine to pursue temp work in the meantime? Sure. If that feels good to you and, and that's something that's available, yeah, go for that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Deborah. You're welcome. Marissa is next. Yes, Marissa. Good morning from sort of sunny California. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I've also been working. Um, I'm still a newbie. I don't know when I'll stop calling myself a newbie, but <laughs> uh, where should I start? My biggest purse. Well, let me start with my guides. <laughs> I've been really working to connect with my guides and I and angels and I heard a name in my head and I would love for you to say that name to confirm that I heard the right thing <laughs> I said what what would your name be and I heard a name so okay. I'm like doubting Thomas well faithful yeah. Thomas I read that that we well all... you know they say that they don't really care what you call them so yeah. whether you heard them say it or you put it there it's the right name don't okay. doubt that because they don't care what you call them they all work on your behalf as a collective that's why they don't care about names. They don't need to be identified individually. They don't have egos. So they're working as a team. Mm -hmm. Right? 
Yeah, which is funny because I'm really bad with names. I'm a teacher and I'm still, by the end of the year, I'm like, hey, you in the red shirt. <laughs> so, okay. Um, can one of my guides tell me of the synchronicities I've seen, um, who sent them? Uh, one, uh, something came up on my phone that could only have been divine because my phone was off and it popped up on my phone. <laughs> I was like, Hey, cool. <laughs> and I, you know, looked up to the heavens and said, thank you. I get it. <laughs> so is there any way to tell who sent it? <laughs> okay. So the message that popped up on Marissa's phone, can you tell her who sent it? I'm just seeing sunshine, flowers, balloons, celebration. What they want you to know is they're just so happy that you recognized it's a message from them. Okay. And again, it's not a name. It's your team sent it to you. Mm -hmm. they're, they want you to know that they're working on your behalf all the time, even when you're not focused on them. So they're sending you these little synchronicities, God winks, to get your attention mm -hmm. and also to validate for you that, yes, it's really happening. Just trust and enjoy it. When you do that, you'll get more. When you let the doubting Thomas go and you just accept and stand in gratitude for each of those connections, you'll get more. Okay. Um, and then <clears throat> is there some other guidance they can give me? I, I've been going through a divorce for about three years now. The custody took all this time and that went pretty well. And so now we're getting into the financial aspect and I, there's just so much spinning of like spinning of wheels. Like today I have to go spend all day photocopying <laughs> bankers boxes full of materials, which seems like a waste of time. I know I can't just sit here and worry. I know I'm putting it into their hands, but is there some other thing that they, some I I haven't dotted or T I haven't crossed that they can help me, we have a conference at the end of June. So what else specifically can I prepare? Yeah, so what there's my it's case, it's an attitude and energy adjustment that you need. So when you're packing those bankers boxes, don't be in the energy of grumpy and gripe, complaining uh -huh. that you have to do it. Instead, think of it as taking action to get you towards your goal. Because okay. when you do that, your energy is moving. You are moving towards your goal. You're doing what needs to be done. You are dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Just whatever they tell you needs to be done, do it with a joyful heart, knowing that you are moving towards your goal. That will help a lot. When you shift into that energy, mm -hmm. there will be more flow and less of the things to be grumpy about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then my job for next year, w will I be going back to my job or I'm, I'm trying to get a job closer to home? Um, so is there a job closer to home available now for Marissa? Job closer to home. Is there more than one? I'm seeing there is one. Okay. And is it something she knows about? No, you haven't found it yet. So would she find this through a connection? Yeah, I'm feeling like it's it's a networking thing where you let people around you know what you're looking for. Okay. And somebody okay. out there knows about this opportunity and will connect you. Oh, okay. So that's, that, good to know. that's calling on you, Marissa, to not do it all by yourself, to reach out and get help. Okay. That's important for you right now. Thank you. You're welcome. Kelly's up next. Hey, Kelly. There, now can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I hear you. Okay. Um, I just got your book and I've read through it and I loved it, by the way. Thank you. And one of the things that has really helped me a lot, I wanted to thank you, is the talking to your ego, your soul, and your higher self, because I've really been having really strong blocks when I'm trying to read the Akashic records and I've been really really frustrated so I sat down and had a little chat and even as I'm going through my my processes I keep asking the ego to step back and it's actually cooperating so I wanted to thank you for that <laughs> that's so awesome 
Yeah, it's been a huge help. I, I had no idea what to do. I was just spinning my wheels for such a long time. And, and I've made more progress just this morning than I have in two weeks. So thank you very much. I really appreciate your advice. Fabulous. Well, it's, it's my guides. They came up with it. So they get all the credit. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate them. Yeah, I recorded a meditation to take you mm -hmm. through that if you need a little extra help with it. So okay. shoot me an email if you need that and I'll get you the link. Okay, that'd be great. And I'm just wondering, do my guides have any messages or guidance for me? Okay, so for Kelly, what message can you share today? I'm hearing like, you know, when um, somebody's taking the needle across records, like in the old vinyl days, and they're like <laughs> scooching across because they're trying to decide what song to play for you. Yeah. So that's an indication of kind of frenetic energy. So it's more breathe, relax, allow, Kelly, because okay. you're not able to tune into the right frequency with all that frenetic energy. So when you do more of the deep belly breathing and just being there, allowing it to come, not questioning and doubting, then it's going to tune in and you're going to get that clarity. Okay, that's good advice. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Jenny K. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. I had a reading done a couple of months ago by another um, psychic and discovered that, and I was just so shocked by all of it. I couldn't take it all in at once. <laughs> I was just yeah. kind of like, whoa. <laughs> and um, she told me that I was a Pleiadian and that I, this was my first time on earth and that I'd been to many other places to help. And I was just like, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> And then that I had a spirit guide whose name is Skyra. And there was one message for me from Skyra at that time. And I didn't think to ask anything more. And so I'm just wondering, I, I've been kind of trying to work on the, the one thing, mm -hmm. um, which was to eat more green vegetables, especially spinach. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I'm just wondering if there's anything else that I need to know. I'm that I just retired a couple of years ago and I'm just trying to figure out my husband's ill and what do I do next? What, am I on the right track? Are there other things I could be doing to make things go more smoothly for him and myself? Okay, so for Janie, do you have any guidance you'd like to share with her today? Oh, I'm feeling them just, they're petting you. They're, they're running their hand down your hair, you know, just stroking and soothing you, telling you to relax. They've got you. Your team is right there all around you. So when you relax and allow them to be there to comfort and guide you, it will get easier. And as others have talked about, you know, when that happens, they tend to doubt that it's their guides. When you called on them, know that they're there. They anticipate and they get there before you even think it or speak it. They'll, they'll be there right away to help you. So they are that close to you and they want you to know that and be comforted by that. As far as the rest of it, as you move forward, yeah, there's unknowns because you're shifting into a new space and a new chapter of life, but you get to create it, Janie. That's the exciting thing. What do you want to create? What would fill your heart with joy? What would be lovely, exciting, and delicious? Lean into that. This is your opportunity to feel through your choices. What are the ones that feel the absolute best? Try those. See if you like them, and if you do, keep going. But it's your time of kind of experimentation, figuring out what you want next. They won't tell you what to do. They will support you in your choices. They will bring inspired ideas to you, but they will never tell you what to do. So it's about you figuring that out for yourself. What do you want? So I feel kind of limited by my husband's health in that. Um, what I want to do is travel yeah. and see the world. Okay. And, so um, if, anytime you fall, leave him to do that in the situation he's in emotionally and physically. And um, so I feel kind of stuck. <laughs> yeah. So what I want you to know, anytime you feel limitation, that's false. That's an illusion. There is no limitation. You're creating that. Instead of saying, I can't do it because ask yourself, how can I? Now that means it's probably going to look different than what you immediately thought it should look. So it's you being creative, inventive, maybe asking for help. 
how can you do this? Now, that means because you've got the consideration of your husband, perhaps you're going to have to do it in a different way. Maybe you find a way that he can go with you. Maybe you find a way that he can get temporary care so that you can take short trips instead of really long ones. Find a way to get a piece of what it is that you're looking for. And as you do that, again, your energy is going to shift. More opportunities will open to you. More people will come into your life. More support, perhaps. Ideas. Inspiration. So don't go into that limiting energy of I can't. That always boxes you in. And your soul is not meant to be boxed in. It wants to soar. So always look for the door, the window. The, there's no roof on the box. You can climb out. But you have to know that. You have to trust that and move towards that opening to go into a new energy space, to see new opportunities, and then decide which of those do I want. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? It does. Okay. Is there anything else that the guides have to say that I need to know? Anything else for Janie? They're singing you Brahms lullaby. They want oh. you to be comfortable. <laughs> you know, they started with patting your head. Now it's uh -huh. Brahms lullaby. They're wanting to bring you comfort in your heart, in your being, to let you relax and know that they're with you. Together, you've got this. It's just figuring out the way through, picking your way through, making the best choices along the way, not stopping. Stopping shuts down the energy. So right. you always want to look for that opening where you can move forward. Keep the energy flowing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Melinda. Hey, Melinda. Um, I want to let you know that I just love your background. Oh, thank that you. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, but anyway, thank you for allowing me this. And um, gotcha. I was wondering um, if... Um, my son Bubba or any guides or angels have anything to say about um, if his if their children um, will will she ever like be ready to um, to raise her children properly? Okay, so. Will the mother of Melinda's grandchildren ever be ready to raise her children properly? No, she's just not cut out for this, Melinda. And she's given you plenty of evidence of that already. So that's just not going to change. Meanwhile, you're doing everything. You're stepping up and you're being that parent for them. Is that okay with you to continue? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, does, does he have anything or do, do the guides have anything to, um, to say about anything? <laughs> I don't know how to ask it. Yeah, that's okay. Bubba and the guides, anybody have something they want to share with Melinda today? I hear, thank you, mama. Uh, so appreciate what you're doing, sacrificing your life. And he, he's acknowledging what a sacrifice this is, Melinda. He wants you to know deep in your heart how much he appreciates that. Because you Thank are you. you are sacrificing your life, and, and that's that's huge. So, mm -hmm. anything else you want to share with Melinda? Yeah, your guides are throwing you a big party. They're saying, Melinda, you deserve it. We're having the party. Pop in and join us when you can. Because they've got <laughs> noisemakers and confetti and horns and they're just having this big party and playing mariachi bands. And it's just, it's a massive party in your honor. They want you to know that's how important you are. That well, thank you. Big bash for you. And they want you to feel that energy. Allow that energy to come to wash over you and to lift you up so that you are part of the party. Okay, well, thank you. You're welcome. Is, is it too early or um, should I not ask about how many, how many lives? <laughs> you want to know how many lives? Okay, <laughs> we'll do that quick. How many lifetimes has Melinda had? 
2,563. Wow. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, ladies. Uh, every time, every time somebody asks that, then everybody wants to know. I know, <laughs> and it makes no difference, you guys. It really doesn't. <laughs> uh, Catherine is next. Hey, Catherine. Hi. Thank you, Deborah. Um, it's so good to connect with you again. I just want to know if my guides have any messages for me today. Okay. So for Catherine, any messages to share today? I'm seeing lots of bright green grass, that fresh spring grass and the beautiful fresh air. So it feels like this is an invitation for you to get out, get your body moving, connect mm -hmm. with nature, shift into that nature energy. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Anything else you want to share with Catherine? Yeah. Now I'm seeing you and the bluebirds of happiness are flying around you with ribbons. <laughs> it's like Snow White. <laughs> Oh, please. It's more joy, like it has been for everybody today. So mm -hmm. it's you, Catherine, looking for those moments where you can sink into and appreciate the joy. It's there for you whenever you want it. You can reach out and touch it. It's visceral. But you have to take the action to reach for the joy. That's you getting out and taking the walk. That's you reaching and taking whatever lovely, beautiful gift the universe is offering you. But there's I'm hearing bountiful. So there's a bountiful array of blessings and abundance waiting for you, but it's you getting your body moving, connecting with it, and then deciding what you want because it's a banquet. You can have anything you like. Thank you. Well, blessings to you. Well, Thanks, Deborah. You're welcome. Bye bye. Okay, Leah is the last one today. If anyone else has any questions, if you have a simple question, just go ahead and put question in the chat. Other than that, Leah is our final for today. Oh, can you hear me? Can you see me now? You moved. Let me see. No, not yet. I see her holding this Hello. child in blue. Hi. Yeah. Hello, this is Eleonora. Hi. <laughs> Look at all one of the hair. One of the twins. Well, she's already 11 months old. Oh my gosh. Yes. And you are <laughs> glowing, Leah. You look so amazing. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. I am. But I just thought to just uh, say hello and uh, ask uh, if my guys have something to, to tell me. And uh, I have a specific question about the twins uh about their dad because uh, their dad is a donor and uh, i'm just uh, starting to think uh when or what should i tell them because uh, i want to tell them the truth uh about uh, their origins they're half italian from their dad um well i'm i'm proud of that uh, because it was a very conscious um selection uh, you know the story yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think that if it wasn't this this person, uh, these two little girls wouldn't be here. Uh, so I want I want them to to know exactly how they came into this world. But I'm just starting to thinking uh, if I should uh, uh, start talking to them early in this early um, age, uh, or should I leave it later or what should I do about that? Okay, so because I'm wise and, and you know soon there will be two or three they will start uh, you know looking for for the dad. So I have yeah. to I have to to have a plan in my mind. Okay, so for Leah, what can you guide her on in relation to telling the twins about their origin? <laughs> They're saying, take your time, Leah, there's no rush. Wait until they start asking. And even then, when they start asking, give them tiny little tidbits of information. Because remember, uh -huh. they won't have the maturity to really understand it for a while. Yeah. So there's no rush. You follow your intuition. You're doing really well with that. Lean into that. And just be loving with them. You're uh -huh. perfect. Don't judge yourself. Allow it to come out in time when, when they're ready. Right. Okay. Don't rush. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. You have to have the maturity to understand what you're sharing with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else about uh, the job? Uh, I have a new opening uh, in, in a tennis club, but uh, um, I, I would love to know more if, if they can share any information about this new open in my, in my job. Okay. So for Leah, the opening, the tennis opening, is that an optimal choice for her? Yeah, it looks really good. Would that be the wise choice for her now that she has the twins to consider? Yeah, it's, it's feeling like there's going to be some flexibility with that job so that it might fit nicely into your lifestyle and accommodate you. Okay, great. Uh, okay, because, you know, these, these years have been a little bit uh, tough. <laughs> but uh, here we are now, and uh, uh, I'm not uh, regretting anything of what I've done. Uh, on the other hand, I'm, I'm proud of what I've done now because uh, uh, it's really really beautiful and um, these two babies they have uh, given so much love to the whole family not only me so now i have to to have a steady job for for them yeah uh, so they can do whatever they want in their life yeah. you've done amazing but they are your miracles <laughs> you manifested this with lots of grit and determination it's amazing yes yes uh, i did uh, i did uh, that was one of the miracles i i manifested i'm sure and it's and it's more than wonderful i i i still don't don't believe they're here <laughs> i know so have you ever thought about writing the story uh Yes, in the name, in the back of my of my head, uh, I have this in my mind. Uh, but I have to find, uh, you know, the structure, the way. Uh, I hope it will be inspiring for uh, other women. Uh, it will absolutely. There's a lot of women, Leah, who would be overjoyed and inspired to read your story. It would be so reassuring for them. And I happen to know a book coach in Greece. Really? Near Athens, yeah. Oh, can you share any information? I will connect you. Yes, happily. Oh, thank you. She thank you. with my book. She was really wonderful. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about that for synchronicity? Yes, everything. Yeah, everything falls uh, on the right uh, time when you're ready. Yes, absolutely. That's for sure. So glad okay. to join us. This is all I wanted to know. I just want to say hello. And uh, uh, I'm always pleased to see you and, and the rest of uh, the participants. <laughs> Likewise. Always fun to have you with us. Thank you so much, Deborah. Bye-bye. Well, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Debbie from Minnesota is next. Debbie, so glad you could be here. So what's um, the question today? So I'm driving. But just wondered if there were any Dan's driving. Oh, great. <laughs> we're in the car. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Any messages? <laughs> any messages for either one of us? Okay. Or both. Do you have a message for Debbie and or Dan? Oh, I'm seeing broad vistas out in front of you. It's like the way is so clear for your vision of your new life. It's like you're driving across Kansas. You know how it's so flat and you can see forever? Yeah. So it's what you're doing is like that. It's just this long path that's wide open, clear for you. No obstacles. Just go and enjoy. Let the sun you know, that's how it down. feels. Yeah. Let the sun shine down on your face. You know, be in deep gratitude and appreciation for it. And just enjoy the heck out of it because... You have worked so hard for this. You've manifested this. And now it's enjoy it and then allow it to evolve. See where it will go from here because there's so many different directions it could take. So much more expansion and joy that's out there for you. But you get to decide which of those you go on, right? Which turn and, and twist do you take? What's the most delightful? It just it feels very warm and, and reassuring. It's like your guides are... Oh, this is funny, Debbie. <laughs> you're, you're dancing the horror. 
<laughs> I don't know what that is. I better look it up. <laughs> you don't know what that is? No, I don't think I do. You're Jewish. How do you not know what that is? No, I'm not. I'm not Jewish. So but that's okay. Not Jewish? Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were Jewish all this time. The horror is that dance they do in a circle where they spin their body back and forth and they dance around and around and they have the people in the center. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, and they they often dance it to Hava Nagila. Okay, all right, that, that makes song? sense to me. I just didn't know the name of it. Yeah, but I got it. All yeah. right, <laughs> they do it at weddings a lot. Sure, sure. Yeah, so they're doing the horror around you. It's a big celebratory thing. They're celebrating oh, cool. with you, which means they're on the journey with you, which means there's a whole lot further to go. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that's how it feels. Yeah, delightful. Stay in that energy because it will continue to expand. That's how it feels. Like every time we think of something we need to do, it's like it just kind of easily arrives. We figure it out. Like the idea pops into our heads, one of us, and then we go, yeah, that feels right. That is awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited for you guys. Can't wait. Thank you. you guys have pictures. Uh, we will. <laughs> awesome. Anything else? All right. No, nope, Dan said no. We're okay. good. Love you. Thank okay, you. Dan. Love you too. Bye. Allie, Bye. Allie B is up next. Hey, Allie, it's been forever. How are you? Oh, hi. You actually remember me. That's <laughs> really of course. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been enjoying listening quietly for a while. And there, your, your little Zooms are getting better and better. It's lovely. You're, you're really blossoming in this medium that you use, I have to say. Thank you. I just want to talk. I am about to get married. Yeah. And we, it's somebody I met years ago. We traveled Africa a little bit and we didn't see each other for years. So I'm in Cornwall now. And we just, I'm just wondering if there's any messages for me. Okay. So what would you like to share with Ali today? So they're singing Tarara Boom DA for you. They're celebrating <laughs> your impending nuptials. Okay, what else? Oh, oh, this is so beautiful. You've got leprechauns walking behind you, holding up your gown. <laughs> leprechauns are escorting you down the aisle. Wow. Okay, what else? That's a very good omen. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Anything else you want to share with Allie? Yeah, I'm seeing the leprechauns are tipping their hats and they've got big smiles. They're just happy. They want to celebrate with you. I don't know. Do you have a connection to the elementals, Allie? The spirits, the, the sprites, the nymphs, the elves? Um, I'm just starting to treat animals along with people. And yeah, I, I, I don't know, but I suppose I, I, I could do. No, I, I do I like fairies, you. I have to admit, little fairies and stuff like that. So yeah. and trees and stuff. Yeah. It feels like they're reaching out to you. They want to connect with you because that will help you expand into a greater area of service with what you're doing. Because okay. you know, they've got all this wisdom to share. And for what for some reason they want to connect with you. So yeah, open up, get out in nature, invite them in, listen for them and see what they want to share with you, where you might take this in your business and in your life. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Carol is next. Hello, thank you very much for doing this. So um, my children, they're grown, they're in their 40s. Um, or all of them, all three girls are going through some very difficult challenges right now. And I just want to know the best way to support them because they're not, they're not aware of these challenges or lessons for them. You know, they're, they haven't gotten there yet. So how can I best support them without interfering with the lessons they have to learn? Okay. So again, you help Carol. How can she support her children in the lessons they're learning? I'm here in Rock of Ages. You are their rock of ages. They need to know that, reassure them of that. I think they do know it, 
but you want to remind them that you are that cell stud I can't talk steady solid rock that they can lean on when they fall down and scrape their knee they can come back to you and you can lift them up and reassure them give them guidance you don't want to offer unsolicited guidance of course you want to wait until they ask for it that's how you can support them without interfering with their own lessons but when they do ask you then feel free to share what you have learned in your lessons because that's what it's all about it's we learn it and then we share it with the next generation you know as we become these old crones and we're sharing that wisdom and love with them as they develop into the next generation who are bringing us all forth Thank you. Thank you. Do my guides have anything else I should be aware of? Okay. Anything else you want to share with Carol? I'm seeing you waltzing in this big ball gown. And it's so beautiful. The energy as you, the movements are, are just so smooth and flowing. So it's about smooth and flowing. I don't know. Do you dance? No. So it's the feeling of that. You've seen right. The I get people the in the movies when they do that beautiful flowing wall. Yeah. yeah. So it's that energy for you. Even if you just go outside and you just move yourself around in that kind of a smooth and flowing energy, they want you to get into that pattern so that it becomes your natural way of being. Okay. More of that beautiful flow. When you run into obstacles or sticky things, you stub your toe, you look for it. Let's go around that and let's get back into the flow of the waltz energy again okay go with the flow yeah and if you ever thought about waltzing go learn it feels wonderful I, well my husband and i have the opportunity not so many weddings now we we really enjoy it yeah yeah that's beautiful well you can waltz by yourself i can yeah absolutely when yeah. i was single i used to go to these square dance conventions and we would do ballroom type dancing between mm -hmm. the square dancing I didn't have a partner. So I just went out and danced by myself. Who cared? It felt good. Right. Right. That's the right. whole thing. It's getting into that feeling because that energy just comes bursting forth from you. It's beautiful for those around you. It's amazing for you. And it will open you up to so many beautiful possibilities. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Go waltzing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Let's see. That was... Carol, correct? Yeah, that was Carol. <laughs> okay. Where am I? Okay, Amy, Amy P is next. And Amy P. Amy. Amy. Deborah, I had another thought I wanted to ask you about. Um, um, I just feel like I just kind of sense there's a move around me actually moving to a different location. And I'm just wondering if you can check in with my guides, your guides to see if I'm sensing that right. And if so, where? Okay. So for Amy is a move in her near future. That would be an optimal choice to move. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Do you have any guidance on where? <clears throat> Sorry, I got a frog all of a sudden. Where? Is it somewhere within like a 50 mile radius of where she is now? No. Do you have possibilities of places you would consider moving to? Um, I've just, I just kind of sense it and it's like, well, I have no clue. And then last night I was kind of asking my guides, is it in this quarter of the United States, that quarter, this quarter, that quarter? So, you know, I got the Southwest and I'm, I'm like in Wisconsin. Okay, so would the southwest of America be an optimal choice for Amy? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I get a big yes on that. So maybe can you take a trip and explore to see if there's yeah. a place that resonates with you? I have been out there and um, I am familiar, but I, it was just never on my radar. So it's kind of interesting that I'm getting that. Yeah. What about Tucson? You ever thought about that area? Um, no. I haven't thought about it. I haven't been to Tucson, but I'll... It's just coming up for some reason. So you might want to check it out. It just might be a good place to visit. Might right. be if you go there, it will connect you with something else. Mm -hmm. But Tucson came up for whatever reason. Okay. Thank you. I, I thank you so much for taking that question. Yeah, you're welcome. No question is too small. <laughs> okay. So Rebecca is next. Okay. 
Rebecca, good morning. Actually, it's good afternoon now, isn't it? Where are you, Rebecca? She's still here. She's still here. I Rebecca, see. unmute yourself. Okay, while well, she's finding the unmute button, why don't you go to Dave and then we'll come back to Rebecca. Okay. Hey, Dave. Welcome, Dave. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you guys. Um, I was just checking in to see if my guides had, had anything for me. Um, or if my dad or anything like that. Okay. So for Dave, anybody want to speak up and share a message with him? Yeah, I feel the energy of your dad. Very warm. Was he a talkative guy? Because he's like really not wanting to speak. Just strong, energetic presence. Yeah. Like a real quiet guy. Yeah. So his eyes are welling up with tears. He just wants you to know how much he loves you and how proud he is of you. And like before, like he's your rock of ages. He's that steady rock that you can lean on, even though he's not physically present. He is still energetically present. He wants you to know that. If you okay. stumble, he's going to be right there at your side to help you. <laughs> so don't doubt that. And if you allow yourself to feel that, imagine it, Dave and believe that it's real. That's the hard thing for a lot of us is that we say, well, I'm just imagining it. They're not really there. No, if it's your intention and you're seeing it, they really are there. So allow yourself to believe and experience that. It'll be a much broader and more satisfying experience for you, more comforting. So whenever you need him, you can call him. Okay. He will gladly come. So let's see if your guides have anything. What can you share with Dave today? Well, I'm hearing God, my son in whom I am most proud. Wow. <laughs> That's huge. Did you need to hear that? Did you need you, creator to you validate say, for you? Can, you? can you say it again? <laughs> Your creator, God, is saying to you, my son in whom I am most proud. I think that's in the Bible somewhere, but. It's like, that's what your creator wants you to know so that you will know that about yourself and appreciate yourself. Because if your creator says he's proud of you, he, she, whatever, then you're doing something right. You're on the right track. Okay, that's good. massive validation. Take that to your heart, cherish that and move forward in strength, power, conviction, and love knowing you have that at your back. Thank you. You're welcome. That's I really need, beautiful. I, I did need to hear that. Yeah. Anything else? No, I was, was going to do that. Um, I had a vision, uh, that vision dance thing that I was going to do um, in the Black Hills. Uh -huh. um, and the, you gave the, or the guides gave the, the green light for that. But with all the stuff with my dad passing and uh, I just, I was so drained that I couldn't do it. Um, and after I just came back home and didn't do that weekend thing, um, I just felt a strong pull like I'm supposed to do it. And so I'm gonna do it this the third week of September. I figure the autumn solstice. So- uh, Do you have um, a backyard? I do. I'm seeing you just going out in your backyard. Don't wait for that, do it before then. If yeah, I did. And make you did. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay, because I'm seeing you just do it anyway. Follow through with the energy. Yeah. If you feel led to do it again. Do it again. Call in some friends. Make it. A yeah, I'm gonna. Fun. I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah. It's because a strong thing. It's just something that's it's. It's like the 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 toppling of a domino. I don't know what's gonna follow, but. It's it's like a past life that you're recreating that you were doing that in a past life and. You're wanting to step back into the knowingness of that power, wisdom, and insight. So if you keep doing this between now and September, by the time you go in September, it's going to be, wow, so much more magnificent because you will already have tuned your frequency to be in alignment with it more so. Yeah, so follow that inspired pull. That's beautiful. Good, I will. Thank you. You're welcome. That was all I had. Okay, thanks for being here.
Thank you for having me. It's a delight to have you here, Dave. That was wonderful. Uh, Rebecca is unable to, to speak this, so I'll ask the questions for her. Okay. Um, this is Rebecca speaking. Can I ask you if my guides have anything to share about right now, this summer and autumn? That's the first question. So for Rebecca, what can you share for her now, the summer and the autumn? the next three seasons. Rebecca, I'm seeing you making pottery. It's like you're, you're sitting there, you've got your hands in the clay and you're shaping. You are leaning into your creativity and it might not be literally pottery, it might just be a metaphor, but there's a call for you right now, Rebecca, to lean into your creativity, to let that expand for you that will serve you really well if you give yourself permission and time to do that. So make the space to do that. Oh, I see you there, Rebecca. So that makes sense? Awesome. Okay. So what's the next part, Donna? Do you have anything to share with my sister? Uh, M-A-H-A-U-T. Help me with the pronunciation of that, Deborah. Mahat? Mahat? My, my pronunciation is a little Ma, off. Mahut. Th thank you, Dave. Is it Mahut? Yeah. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> Good enough. Yes. Well, the guides know. Okay. I don't have to pronounce it for the guides. Right. They got it. So do you have anything to share? Is it about or for her? For, uh, with her. Anything to share with my sister. Okay. So what can you share with Rebecca's sister? I'm seeing her dancing like a sprite. She's got streamers from her hair. She's got this long flowing hair and long flowing skirt. It's almost like a, a Celtic ceremony or a, maybe a Druid ceremony. She's out there barefoot dancing in the grass, in the dewy grass. So she's doing it in the morning or in the evening. She's just dancing and being free. She's allowing herself to flow. So it's more expressiveness for her in a different way than you're expressing yourself, if that makes sense. It's more physically using her body to express herself. Is she a dancer? No? Okay. Maybe she wants to try some dancing. Just get out there barefoot in the grass and run around and see how she feels. It's, it's beautiful what they're showing me. And she messaged uh, M-A-O, Mayo. That's what she calls her, Mayo. Okay. Wonderful. And uh, that's all we have up for questions today. Okay. So Donna, what's your question? What is it that is required me do to get the site back up? <laughs> okay. And then Lawrence popped in with the question. So for Donna, what can you share with her about getting the site back up? Deep breathing, Donna. Breathe, relax a while. <laughs> Don't stress about it because you want the energy to flow, you know that. It's in the moment when you have that little panic and it's like, oh my God, I gotta get this back up and, and thinking it's gonna be so bad, but just flow with it because when you relax and you get into that flow, you will see or feel what's wrong so that you can fix it way quicker than if you stress about it. Yeah, I, I just, I feel that all I need to do is just to, to call hosting because there's just some little thing that can be fixed on the back end. Yeah, and stay in that energy instead of going into the energy of, oh, it's going to be something really bad. And it's going to be down for weeks. You know, stop. That. Oh, no, I know it's not going to be down for it's going to be It's going to be up by tomorrow. I know that. You know, I just soon have it done. Yeah. And just, you know, but you having to spend the time. Uh, it, well, you know, it's really interesting because this is a lesson that I got. The lesson I got was always remember after you've done some real big updates to do a backup of the site and load it on your computer. <laughs> that was the lesson. I got the message. Okay, I've got it. <laughs> Give it back to me so I don't have to recreate it. <laughs> yeah, they always tell you that. Get that back up in there as soon as you make changes. And let's see, with the course creation amplified, the done with you mastery series that I'll be launching this week. Any guidance in relationship to that 
Okay. Well, first of all, I just asked if your site would be back up today and I got a yes. Oh, thank you. So, um, <laughs> the course that's launching this week, what can you tell Donna about that? <laughs> I'm seeing these little duckies floating around in the pond and their little feet are just paddling like crazy. You got all your ducks in a row, Donna. <laughs> You've, you've done the prep work you've birthed it now it's time just to let it come out and meet the public and the spotlights are coming down and the people are clapping because they're so delighted with what you're sharing it's it's huge success it's just gonna flow so what's really interesting is that the a new brand evolved this last week because i was getting up the the master class course Cre uh, creation simplified into the mind shift hub Dot com and that's the one that's down mike just said the other site my mind shift on demand that's that's up but where the course is housed is mindshifthub.com and it, it was it was so bizarre because i'm i'm doing something that would have taken would have taken only an hour maybe an hour and a half to get up but i went into this creation i'm going well let me do this let me go that i'm telling it's it's a simple way to do it. But for some reason, I was working out some kinks. And all of a sudden, I thought, I'm having labor pains. And and it was like, I said, I am the doula, I am the course doula. And I went, what? And I looked up the word, I googled it. And doula is a, a, from the Greek word, and it means woman who serves. And I said, that is me, I'm a course doula. So there you go. I'm helping people birth their courses. Yeah, there are birth doulas. There are death doulas. I saw that in your email and I thought, oh, how interesting. Another moniker that you're coming up with. And I'm not, you know, it's like, I, that's not my intention, but it's just, they're just evolving like uh, the chief simplifier and the course doula. So <laughs> it's all in alignment. It's very flow. So it's just this tiny little glitch and you'll get past that. And Lawrence has a question. Did you want to speak it, Lawrence? Can you unmute? If not, I'll speak it for you. Thank you, Mike, for looking up that website. That's really helpful. Hello. Lawrence, go ahead. Um, well, I've been going through this situation for two years. Um, I had a house fire and I lost just about everything, including my dogs, um, my puppy. and I had people stealing stuff from me, clothing and everything, collections. Anyway, it's in the process of being fixed, but I don't know the time frame. And then I have to upgrade it. Well, I want to upgrade it to sell it. Um, to like to see if the guys know there's any timeline, um, because I am going to have to move and I have to have to get the money from my house sale to put down on another house that I have to live in. Because mm -hmm. right now I'm living with my landlord in a room and I'm tired of it. Um, I need to move on. So that's the, that's the first part of it. And then the second part of it is I had a charity organization where I was helping people doing events, still a possibility in the future. So the question is, when will your house sell? Is that what you Yeah, mean? I'm waiting on the insurance company to give these people money. Yeah, so basically, when is it going to be fixed? And then I have to upgrade, means I have to get a loan to do that. So at what point is all this going to be done where I can eventually put money down on a new home? Are we looking at months or what? Okay, so for Lawrence, can you give us a time frame for when the house will be upgrade it is that more than six months is it more than a year hmm. it's going to be a while lawrence it's going to go slow so is it going to be more than 18 months more than two years no okay so at least not two years so like 19 somewhere around 20 months for the repair and the upgrade but here's the thing let's ask this question is it possible that lawrence could sell the house before the upgrade is complete 
Yeah, they're they're whispering, Lawrence, they don't want you to overlook the possibility that you don't have to wait until all that's done, that you might be able to facilitate a sale sooner. So if you put that out there as your intention, that you want to get out of that house, get some money so that you can get a new place, you don't have to wait for all that other stuff. No, I don't, but I'll make a lot less. And money's important. But if and it, I already waited, I've already waited two years. Okay, but if it takes another two years, is that going to be okay with you? No, it's too long. Yeah. It's already so, two years. So that's why they're they're mentioning this. That think about other possibilities. What if you could sell it before it's all finished? Well, how long? Would, how long would that take just to be able to sell it? Okay, so is it highly likely that the house could sell in less than a year? It is. What about less than six months? It is. Again, it's going to be you being flexible because you're going to get low ball prices. So you're going to have to figure out where your point is that you're willing to go to get out of there. What is that worth to you? You could conceivably sell it in six months, but you have to be flexible. By flexible, you mean settling? In your sales price, because if somebody's going to buy it as a fixer upper, they're going to pay less for it but you're getting your time back and what is that worth to you so that's what you have to weigh for yourself hmm, doesn't sound good well, not pop, yeah. two years more of waiting for the upgrade versus getting out sooner and starting your life again sooner so well, don't close yourself off to those possibilities because what if somebody comes along and they just love it and they're willing to pay a better price right. allow that to be a possibility but if you have it in your head and your energy that you have to wait until the upgrade is done, you're going to be stuck there another couple of years. It's That's up too to long. you. Too, way too long. No. Yeah. So you already waited two years. Shift your energy into opening up to the possibility okay. of a sale sooner. Set that as your intention. This is about you learning the lesson, Lawrence, of lifting the limitations, looking for other possibilities and being flexible. Okay. It's a great opportunity for you. So if you lean into it, and you do get the flexibility going and you are willing to entertain other ways out, other ways will come to you. And the second part was, um, well, there's a lot of parts. The second one was my charity organization. I love doing that. And I loved helping people and doing events, but I don't know, I need help to do that from other people. Mm -hmm. So is it highly likely that Lawrence will be back working with his charity organization yeah it is and of course you need other people to help you with it so be in that uplifting spirit of what you do in that charity organization so that you will attract other people to help you the energy you're in now is not conducive to bringing people in and i know yeah. that's because you've been through some real crap but you have to find the light spots the silver linings focus on the good stuff not all the bad stuff because that'll keep you in the bad stuff well, I wasn't focusing on negativity. I was focusing on the good times that I had. You know, all that's, the positive that's things. everything. I'm talking about your life, your house, oh all the stuff you've been through. You've got to shift all that energy into the uplifting space. Okay. Find the silver lining in everything. So you lost a lot of stuff. Now you're freer to move. You have less stuff to move. You have an opportunity to go and start a whole new chapter in your life. Look for those kind of uplifting thoughts about this situation. That will get you out of it faster. The more you spend in despair and, and looking back at what you've lost, the longer you'll stay there. Well, my, dog, my dogs were a big part of my life. So they were my family. So, um, your, your dogs are fine. You miss them, but they will come and be with you if you call them. They'll come in spirit to comfort you. And where you're going, maybe there wasn't a space for the dogs. Find the, the good things that you can in this situation. Well, I'm going to be getting, I'll be getting new dogs again. Once I get in my house, yeah. I will. So it behooves you to get into that positive energy sooner than later. So you can yeah. get those dogs, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Baby steps. You don't have to do it in a leap. <laughs> okay. Yes, I can. You're welcome. There we are. We're done. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's just take a moment to close out. Thank our guides. So 
thank you all of you for being here today. I so appreciate your energy. You bring this love and light together and lift all of us up in the most magnificent way so that when this video goes on YouTube, those who are watching it can feel that energy and be touched by it. That is a massive gift. And you are all a part of that. And I'm so appreciative of your contribution. Donna, you are my angel, my right hand. And I so appreciate you being here, lifting all of us up and guiding us through. Honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Deborah. Oh, you're welcome. Anything else you want to share before we say goodbye for me? Oh, so they're ending it up with zippity doodah. They want to put us all into that happy, happy, joy, joy state. And remember, you can't do too much of that. Get out in that grass with your bare feet. Connect with Mother Earth. Revel in the beauties of nature. Be in that space of joy and appreciation, and that will attract more to you. Anytime those negative thoughts come in, swipe them away. Keep doing that until it becomes your new way of being, that you're focused on the uplifting, positive thoughts more often than not. The doors will open, the windows will open, the possibilities will show up. Your life will become easier and more joyful. And that is what your guides want for you. They are right there by your side, ready to take you through that next threshold. But you've got to come with them. So stop resisting. Go with the flow. Let your guides help you forward into your new bright future because it is there awaiting you. With love and with joy, your guides are now embracing you. And they're blowing in your ear and they're whispering, you got this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With much love and light. Till next month. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.